gourmet exotic cuisine at its best. President Trump, he knows the shakedown when he sees it. Bob Mueller cares about one thing, indicting bad guys and putting them in prison. A president is trying to control the Justice Department's investigation into him. Phony Russia witch hunt. Tonight at 8 on Arizona PBS. Thanks for watching Arizona PBS, a viewer supported community service of Arizona State University. See this flower garden? There used to be a car sitting there, a car I didn't use and didn't want. So I donated it to public television and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the vehicle donation program. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. PBS Online. Share. Tweet. Watch. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. In a time of change, where can you find in-depth reporting and thoughtful analysis? Washington Week on PBS. Join moderator Robert Costa. When I was at the Capitol this week, I encountered the same... And a panel of award-winning journalists. You're seeing, you're seeing. For insights and perspectives. Key development in the you Senate. won't find anywhere else. What a week. Washington Week. Friday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... When you cast your vote in the upcoming election, you connect with issues that hit close to home. Clean Elections provides voter resources and tools so you can vote informed on August 28th. Connect with the facts at azcleanelections.gov. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. We're tracking record rainfall across the state today from the remnants of Hurricane Rosa. Plus, sewage is leaking from a pipeline that connects Arizona to Mexico, and now preventative measures are underway to keep residents from getting sick. And we take you to the nation's capital where Arizona Senator Jeff Flake talks about the future of our nation's politics in this polarized political environment. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Jordan Daphnis. And I'm Matt Lively. Thank you for joining us. Rainfall from Tropical Storm Rosa continues to soak the state as flood washes go through tomorrow morning in certain parts of Arizona. We've seen record amounts of rainfall today, making it the fourth wettest October in Phoenix history, just two days in. Cronkite News reporter Holly Bernstein visited schools closed due to flooding today across the valley. The entire Maricopa Community College system saw its classes called off today at noon. And at least three Valley Middle Schools saw their classes canceled today as well. But schools aren't the only ones impacted by the storm. Flooded intersections are making it difficult for drivers to safely commute. And one car business says some of its cars are submerged slightly in the water. A customers ain't coming in because of all the water and everything. And then it gets all the lot dirty here. Taylor Auto Sales is a used car dealer near 19th Avenue and McDowell. Local salesman Sergio Madrid says the road floods every time it rains, causing costly repairs to the cars. Depending on the vehicle, but I'm, I'm averaging around uh, $60 more per, uh, per axle on the front. The rain is causing problems for students as well. At least three Valley schools are closed today because of the storm. Rio Vista Elementary in Avondale was closed due to a power outage. Rainbow Valley Elementary in Maricopa and Desert Horizon Elementary in West Phoenix were both closed due to flooding. Pendergast School District spokesperson Netta Shafir says they closed Desert Horizon today when they saw the magnitude of the storm. Safety is our number one priority and we want to make sure that the school is safe for, for staff and students. Shafir says cleanup crews are in place right now. It was more of the flooding um, around the school, in the streets, and then the neighborhoods and on the sidewalks that prevented people from being able to get safely to school. 
The school says that they do expect to be open tomorrow, but parents should check the website just in case. In downtown Phoenix, Holly Bernstein, Cronkite News. Let's head over to the Weather Center with Alexis Liel, who has the latest on the rain totals across the state. Alexis. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, we are still tracking the hurricane as it has made its way from Mexico, where we can see up to four inches of rain throughout the valley. Right now in the Sky Harbor area, we're sitting above two inches, making it the 10th wettest day on record here in Phoenix. And we will be on a flash flood watch for southern Arizona for the next few hours. Looking at the radar, we can see how it is moving up in the higher country up north in the Sedona Flagstaff area. We are going to see those heavier rainfalls here in Phoenix. It's going to be small showers throughout the rest of the evening, but not too bad as we were seeing earlier this morning. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Alexis Liao. The widespread rain brought by Hurricane Rosa has spurred calls for help across Maricopa County. Damage cleanup companies have experienced a deluge of calls over the last 48 hours. This Scottsdale couple is dealing with flooding issues. Standing water in the front and backyard of Sam Alaga's home is causing water to seep through the walls, causing damage to their carpet, furniture, and the basement. Well, my wife discovered it this morning. Uh, she dropped off the kids at work, at, home, at school, and came home and realized that uh, there was a lot of water in the backyard. And so she went out and realized there's, you know, a puddle in the, in the backyard grass. Went downstairs in our basement area and she could hear water dripping in a couple of the rooms. So we realized we have a situation mm -hmm. with the water flooding through the, the walls. And the restoration companies expect to take even more calls and are deploying teams throughout the valley. The border town of Naco is still dealing with a pipeline that's been spilling raw sewage for weeks. And as officials try to figure out a way to solve the problem, several efforts are being made to keep people safe, including a free vaccination clinic. Cronkite News reporter Brittany Watson was there. Garbage and sewage continues to pile up right at the border, separating Naco, Arizona and Naco, Sonora, leaving residents worried and health officials doing what they can to keep citizens as safe as possible. At any time we have raw sewage into a community area, we want to take preventive steps. Steps like this vaccination clinic aimed at curbing the potential effects of this pipeline, which has been leaking raw sewage with authorities declaring a state of emergency back on September 9th. Community leaders gathered at the Naco fire station answering questions, addressing concerns and vaccinating residents while also doing house calls. Francisco and Lydia Romo weren't able to physically attend the clinic, but they're still getting their shots. I'm at home at all times because of her. She is unable to move, so I have to be here for her. The Romos are getting protected from a spill that's been happening on and off, but this is the first time it's flowed into residential areas. With consistent flows roughly quarterly, that can range anywhere from a couple of weeks to four or five months. A sole source water aquifer provides water to Naco, Arizona, Naco, Sonora, and is pumped to residents in Bisbee. So the health concern here is how much of this sewage could potentially make its way through the soil and pollute the groundwater supply. Several lab tests are being done, checking for E. coli, fecal coliforms, nitrates and nitrites, heavy metals, volatile organics, and more. Officials say plans for temporary repairs are underway, but they're looking for a permanent solution involving governments from both sides of the border. To fix it completely is the responsibility of Mexico, uh, the, the Mexican uh, authorities and the water system in Mexico. It, it is ultimately their responsibility to manage their sewage flows. In Naco, Brittany Watson, Cronkite News. There will also be a children's vaccination clinic on October 12th as officials await the results of the lab test. Local officials in Cochise County say they need state and federal authorities to work with their Mexican counterparts to fix this leaping pipeline permanently. Mail delivered to the Pentagon mail facility has tested positive for the poison ricin, according to CNN. The packages were addressed to Defense Secretary Jim Mattis and Chief of Naval Operations Admiral John Richardson, but never made it into the building. Further testing is expected. Ricin is highly toxic and can kill a human if injected, ingested, or inhaled, and there is no known cure. It's been a tense couple of weeks in Washington as Senate Republicans and Democrats spar the over FBI Supreme finished. Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, whose nomination is on hold while the FBI investigates sexual assault allegations against him. 
The senators behind that investigation, Arizona Republican Jeff Flake and Delaware Democrat Chris Coons, came together today with a message of bipartisanship, as Daniel Pearl reports from our Washington Bureau. In their first public appearance since brokering a bipartisan deal last week, Senator Chris Coons of Delaware and Senator Jeff Flake repeated their insistence that Washington needs more bipartisanship, like what was on display in the Judiciary Committee last week. A standing ovation greeted the two senators as they walked onto the Atlantic Festival stage today. They said rampant partisanship threatens not just Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination, but the court itself. Um, that's how it has worked for us to cede so much authority <laughs> and give so much power to the Supreme Court because people still have faith. If that faith is gone, then heaven help us. Theirs was one of several discussions on the danger polarization poses to American democracy. A danger Flake saw up close when a gunman opened fire at a Republican practice for last year's congressional baseball game. Why us? Why here? Um, how can someone look on a field that a bunch of middle-aged men playing baseball, trying to relive their youth, and see the enemy. Blake said the more partisan nature of politics made him realize he could not run a re-election campaign this year, but Coons, who is up for re-election in 2020, said it gave him all the more reason to run again. If the Senate doesn't work, our Constitution, our Republic, our nation doesn't work, I cannot abandon this post. If the people of Delaware will have me, I'll do it again. And I want to tell you. While avoiding saying whether the FBI investigation would sway his vote one way or the other, Senator Flake did say he hopes it will wrap up by the end of the week and that it finds facts. In Washington, Daniel Pearl, Cronkite News. The FBI finished questioning Mark Judge, a high school classmate of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh today. This comes just days after Christine Bozzi Ford, a former classmate of Kavanaugh's, testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee along with Kavanaugh. Amid the questioning, President Trump commented on the investigation earlier today in Washington, D.C. It's a very scary time for young men in America when you can be uh, guilty of something that you may not be guilty of. You could be somebody that was perfect your entire life, and somebody could accuse you of something. Doesn't necessarily have to be a woman, as everybody says, but somebody could accuse you of something, and you're automatically guilty. But in this realm, you are truly guilty until proven innocent. That's one of the very, very bad things that's taking place right now. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said there will be a vote on Kavanaugh's confirmation to the Supreme Court by the end of this week. Republican Martha McSally and Democrat Kirsten Sinema will face off in an hour-long debate hosted on Arizona PBS and the Arizona Republic on October 15th. McSally called to allow Green Party candidate Angela Green into the debate but was declined. The con Congress women are running for the U.S. Senate, and the seat is currently held by Jeff Flake, who is not seeking re-election. The debate for cinema's open seat is happening tonight on Arizona PBS. Democrat Greg Stanton and Republican Steve Ferrara will face off on a special hour-long Arizona Horizon tonight at 5 on Channel 8. Technology jobs are on the rise in our state. Coming up on Cronkite News where our state falls on the tech talent national rankings and the expansion of these talents in the Valley, next. And a training was hosted by the FBI to teach safety behind your screens. A closer look at online risks, next. Join any award-winning CNN anchor Anderson Cooper as he receives the 2018 Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism, attracting industry leaders from the media, politics, business, and education. The award luncheon is the Cronkite School's signature fundraising event. Tickets for the luncheon ceremony on Wednesday, October 17th at the Sheraton Grand in Phoenix are available for sale at cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon or call 602-496-0482. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS 
CBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. Want to work in the technology sector? You may just live in the right state for that. Cronkite News reporter Jimmy Jackson looks at how Arizona is starting to compare to other major tech areas in the country. Arizona is becoming a force to be reckoned with within the tech industry. Elliot Polak, CEO of a real estate consulting firm, told business leaders recently that Arizona has a cost of living advantage for tech owners and its employees. It's got a great locational advantage compared to places in the middle of the country because it's close to California and I think a lot of companies that will be moving here will be California based now and that California will simply price them out of the market tax wise and regulatory wise. Real estate company CBRE's report which measures high tech job growth across the country has Phoenix as number five on its list for growth in 2015 and 2016 with 25% job growth, which translates to more than 10,000 jobs. Ravi Kumar, the president of consulting and IT services firm Infosys, recently announced the company's expansion in Arizona and cited the reasons why Arizona was at the top of its list of places to set up its innovation hub. It was very clear that the government was very proactive, but there was a huge, there was a huge talent pool which we can tap into in the state of Arizona. Arizona. Phoenix is now ranked 15th in tech talent markets according to the CBRE's 2018 research on tech talent. Pull access tech is still a small portion of the Arizona job market, but there is potential. Millennials like it here. There's a lot going on here in terms of, of fun stuff, interesting stuff. Um, and so, yes, I think that Phoenix has a distinct possibility of becoming a major tech hub. Kumar says Emphasis has found that Arizona is a place where there is sufficient talent at universities to train and fill tech jobs. In Phoenix, Jimmy Jackson, Cronkite News. The annual report by CBRE shows that the tech employment sector grew four times more than the national jobs average. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich announced that Orangutan Home Services, a heating and air conditioning company, will pay $150,000 in civil fines for calling residents on the do not call list. Burnovich said they had been making thousands of illegal telemarketing calls for months. October is National Cyber Awareness Month. In an effort to keep kids safe on the internet, the FBI launched a program called SOS. SOS stands for Safe Online Surfing. It is a game used in schools, which is designed to teach children the best ways to interact while using the internet. Some of the topics covered on SOS are cyberbullying, game safety, and online predators. While there are good neighborhoods on the internet, there are also bad neighborhoods. And we want kids to know how to keep themselves out of those bad neighborhoods. And if they do, happen to find themselves into a bad neighborhood. We want them to know how to protect themselves. SOS was launched in 2012, but was recently relaunched for this current school year. Construction was approved for a nearly $100 million deal for a new health science campus in Phoenix. Coming up on Cronkite News, Park Central in Midtown Phoenix is adding physical therapy and pharmacy schools to the lots shopping scene. The storm has not only brought in a lot of rainfall to the valley, but also cooler temperatures coming up next on Cronkite News. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact.
We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon, your source for what matters most this election season. Only on Arizona PBS. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we going to see when we get really close? Wow. Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. A new medical school is being built right in the heart of Phoenix. Reporter Cami Clark shows how Creighton University could give Park Central Mall a new lifeline. Park Central Mall is getting a facelift here in Phoenix, and the plans include bringing a Nebraska university to the city's oldest shopping mall. A campus will include a medical school, nursing school, pharmacy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant training, and emergency medical services training. The school will fit into a new vision of Park Central Mall with new stores and restaurants nearby St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center. Everything that we're doing here at Park Central, particularly on the exterior spaces, will be a major attraction to not only the students at Creighton, but to the people who come to Park Central to work. As Park Central Mall is changing with the times, Creighton University looks to it as a hub for students. We also wanted to make sure as a university is that we don't, we like all of those amenities for students, but we really don't necessarily want to provide them ourselves. We want to work with partners like Park Central where there is a Starbucks, a First Watch, a Jimmy John's. The new Creighton University Health Sciences campus is expected to be completed by 2021. In Midtown Phoenix, Cami Clark, Cronkite News. Park Central Mall's construction of expanding a new parking garage and revamping its storefront is estimated to be finished by next year. Heavy rainfall impacted most parts of the state today. Alexis Liel is tracking our forecast in Tropical Storm Rosa as it rolls through Arizona. Good afternoon, everyone. We are currently sitting at 81 right now here in Phoenix, hitting a higher humidity level at a dew point at 72 degrees because of the storms with winds blowing at 13 miles per hour right now. Looking at the valley low temperatures for tomorrow, we're going to be at 70 degrees in Phoenix, but all across the board, we're going to remain in the upper 60s. For the high temperatures today, we are topping off here in Phoenix at 80 degrees. Pretty cool day up north. Flagstaff at 57, 75 in Globe and 89 in Yuma. Now for the high temperatures tomorrow, here's what we can expect. 86 degrees here in Phoenix, up north still cool, and 89 in Yuma. Now for your seven-day forecast, we're going to be below normal. You can see we're going to be averaging out at 95, but this week we're going to be all in the 80s, ending our week on Tuesday at 77 degrees with some storm chances coming in tomorrow and Thursday. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Alexis Leal, Cronkite News. It's been 16 years since Arizona has had a state-sanctioned boxing title. Coming up on Cronkite News, a brand new MMA title to be fought for. That's next. I'm Matt Berry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. 
Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. Here at Cronkite News, we have producers who craft shows that make an impact on our community. Our broadcasts allow students to be involved in all levels of production, from producing to directing. We are guided by highly respected professionals who mentor the journalists of tomorrow. From technical directing to teleprompting and beyond, our production crew works tirelessly to produce meaningful and award-winning shows. We are Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. The Arizona Department of Gaming is bringing back its state boxing championship and adding a new state MMA championship. Our own Ethan Gaines has more on how these new titles could affect combat sports in Arizona. It's been 16 years since Arizona had a state-sanctioned boxing title, but last month the Arizona Boxing and Mixed Martial Arts Commission announced that it would once again recognize a state boxing championship belt as well as creating a brand new MMA title. I stumbled upon the, the rule that we had for state championships and I began to look and see when's the last time we had one. And I thought that we could re-energize and help the industry by giving some excitement to promoters by having a new thing to compete for. Arizona has four local MMA promoters and two for boxing and is now one of just a handful of states with an MMA championship. It's been necessary. Probably two-thirds of the events we do are now MMA events. The fan base is growing daily, I think. They're very well-attended events, and it's the high time we had a state champion, I think. Many local boxers are excited about the reinstatement of the state boxing titles, including Fidel Hernandez, a light heavyweight boxer who won the state championship back in 1997. I was young. I was 18 years old. I had just been a professional for one year. Just to have a belt, it means a lot to a fighter, especially when you're starting off. There's a lot of great fighters that won state titles before becoming world champions, so it means a lot. Manessas added that he's excited to put the titles up for grabs in the near future. Us having more, more titles um, will help promoters um, feel more, sell more seats, so that'll help them. The financial impact for our economy here in the state of Arizona um, is expected to help the more events that we have that draws more crowds, greatly affects the economy here in Arizona, and affects the revenue for the promoters. The new championships will be active in every weight class. From Phoenix, Ethan Gaines, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, join us for a special hour-long debate between candidates for Congressional District 9, Democrat Greg Stanton and Republican Steve Ferrara. A congressional debate on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Amna Nawaz. On the next news hour, a rare look on the ground in Libya as violence escalates amid a migrant crisis. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. on The Great American Read. The Handmaid's Tale, Moby Dick, and the Harry Potter series are just a few of the books we'll explore when we confront villains and monsters on The Great American Read. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. 
Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University.